Shalom, this is Avram Shira at Ashkelon Beach in Eretz Israel. It's Arab Shabbat. And, you know, it's just a wonderful place to meditate, to think, to look at the world and look at the, our lives. When we go to the ocean, it pulls something out of us. And I think it gives something back. And that's really the symbiotic relationship of all creation to it, all the pieces of itself. And, you know, the, the rabbis have an interesting statement. They said that God created the, uh, the beach in order to protect the land from the ocean. In other words, if there wasn't for the beach, the ocean would swamp the coastline, ruin the land, flood things, cause all kinds of problems. So that's an interesting statement if you think about it. He created the beach to protect the land from the ocean. But how was it done? Think about this. The beach is essentially all the little particles of sand washed up from the ocean. So the ocean itself is creating the boundary that protects the land from itself. Think about that a minute. The ocean creates a boundary for itself to protect the other, to protect the land. And it uses the soil that is in the midst of the sea, the sand, to create that boundary. The boundary comes from itself. Think about that. It's a very deep idea. Because life is filled with boundaries. Laws are boundaries. Customs are boundaries. Mores, norms, all kinds of fancy categories of boundaries that, that man imposes on himself and on society. So society imposes back on man. And we have these boundaries for a reason. They're good for us. They protect us from ourselves. They protect us from others. They protect us from nature. So if we look deep into the Kabbalah, we, say, we see in the beginning that the first creation that God made was a boundary. He made a boundary between his infinite light and a place where his light was hidden. He made a boundary between the upper firmament, the heavens, and the lower firmament, what we would call our atmosphere. He made a boundary in the seas. There are boundaries in the land, in the land masses, between continents, between nations. So you see, there's something very good here in the making of boundaries. And I was thinking a little further, and I realized Shabbat itself is a boundary. It is a boundary that man makes. Now, we were commanded, but man actually has to make the boundary. We make a boundary in time. We say this is a time of work, of toil, of effort, exertion, stress, perhaps. Some people, I think, have jobs without stress. <laughs> Not everybody can be a park ranger. And then we say, no, now we're going to stop. We're going to stop the weekday. We're going to make a boundary. We're going to call it Shabbat, to rest, to sit, to contemplate, to think, to breathe deep. To, you know, in, in Halakha, we even have a law about walking slower on Shabbat than we do on the weekday. We're not supposed to run anywhere on the week on, the, on Shabbat because it looks like we're under the influence of external needs. See, and the whole idea of Shabbat is to drop some of those external needs so that we can commune with all nature, all reality, and of course the creator of all of it. So when we keep Shabbat, you know, I hear over and over from people that 
come in that are new to religion and they're interested in Torah, they're interested in Judaism, they're interested in a, a different lifestyle than what they grew up with. And they say, well, but Shabbat is too hard. I can't go on my phone. I can't talk to people I need to. I can't go anywhere. I can't drive. And, you know, these types of impositions on the weekday life that we lead. Now, if I look at it like that, that I, I'm being limited by Shabbat, then you do feel it in position. But if you look at it like freedom from those things that I do during the week, freedom from the responsibilities that we have in this world, freedom from concerning myself with all the issues that we have to deal with during the week. Shabbat is not an imposition. I'm creating a boundary. I'm saying this is Avraham Shira in his weekday and this is Shabbat. I'm stopping the week. I'm stopping all the things that I have to do during the week and I'm giving myself a break. You know, <laughs> what a great idea. Give ourselves a break. So, here at the ocean, we feel the vastness of the sea. Of course, in Kabbalah, the sea is the sea of wisdom. And the earth is called Isha Karka'a. The, the earth is compared to a woman, and the woman is always compared to the idea of kingship, the power to control, the power to give over. So we have this boundary between the sea of wisdom, the land, of creation and the beach a little bit of sand that keeps the two operating nicely because if you put the sea and the land together neither of them can be themselves the sea is swallowed up by the land the land stops being and doing what it can do so if I don't have a, a beach in my week called Shabbat <laughs> then I could get swallowed up. And we all know what that's like a little bit, you know. So I want to bless everyone to give yourself the break of Shabbat, to give yourself the freedom of Shabbat. It is not a godly, rabbinical, imposed set of sanctions to keep me in line. It's not a system of social credit. <laughs> And it's not a Marxist entity, nor is it a geographic issue. It's an issue of my relationship to myself and the rest of the world. And when we set these boundaries, we create life, the possibility of life. Just as God knew that nothing can bear infinite light and exist we can't even remain ourselves if we're exposed to the infinite light. So God makes boundaries. And the physical world is the main boundary between us and the spiritual. And with that boundary, we get to be ourselves. We get to operate. We get to feel like free beings in a miraculous world that we live in. So I bless you all with a wonderful Shabbat, a wonderful day of rest, a day of contemplation, prayer, festivity, joy, gratitude. Sunday night, the festival Hanukkah is upon us, so we'll be talking about that later in the week, and um, we'll be broadcasting several classes about Hanukkah and uh, the, the, the victory of human dignity and freedom versus the tyranny of an oppressive foreign element. So God bless you all. Have a wonderful Shabbat. We'll see you next week on all the platforms. Shabbat Shalom.